Adhikarana 13. Rites unaccompanied by meditation. Doubt. Under the topic just finished, it has been well established that when the obligatory duties like Agnihotra, etc., are done for the purpose of getting liberation by one aspiring for it, they become the cause of exhausting the accumulated sins and thereby the cause for purifying the mind. Becoming in this way contributory to the realization of Brahman, which leads to liberation, they come to have the same result as the knowledge of Brahman itself. Now these Agnihotra, etc. may be performed along with meditations that are based on the auxiliaries of rites or without them. For from the following texts we know that Agnihotra, etc. can be done either separately or along with meditation. One who possessed of such knowledge makes a sacrifice. One who possessed of such knowledge pours the oblation. One who knowing thus chants the hymn. One who knowing thus sings. Therefore one should select a man possessed of this knowledge as the priest called Brahma, and not one who is ignorant of this. Chandogya Upanishad 4.17.10 With that Aum, both perform rites, the one who knows and the one who does not. Chandogya 1.1.10 Now the point to be considered is whether Agnihotra and other rites, not just as they are but associated with meditation, become the cause of knowledge to an aspirant for liberation and thus come to produce the same result as knowledge. Or such rites do so equally without distinction, either by themselves or in association with knowledge. Why does this doubt crop up? Since in the text, they seek to know it through sacrifice. Brihadaranyaka 4.4.22 The rites like Agnihotra are heard of without any reservation as the causes of knowledge, and since Agnihotra, etc., when associated with meditation, are known to acquire a special advantage. What should be the conclusion, then? Opponent. Rites like Agnihotra, etc., when associated with meditation, can alone become helpful to the knowledge of the self, but not so those that are devoid of meditation. For a man of knowledge is known to have an advantage over the man without knowledge, from such Upanishadic texts as, He who knows as above conquers further death the very day he makes that offering. Brihadaranyaka 1.5.2 And from such Smriti texts as, Endowed with which wisdom, O son of Prita, thou shalt break through the bonds of karma. Gita 2.39 Work with desire is verily far inferior to that performed with the mind undisturbed by the thoughts of results, O Dhananjaya. Gita 249. Vedantin. This being the position, the aphorist explains. Sutra 18. Yadeva vidya yetihi, yat eva, whatever is done. Vidyaya, with knowledge. Eti, this text, he surely shows this. Translation The Upanishadic text, whatever is done with knowledge, surely indicates this. It is true that Agnihotra and other rites, when associated with meditation, are better than the Agnihotra, etc., not associated with meditation just as much as a learned brahmana is better than a brahmana without learning. Even so, Agnihotra and other rites are not absolutely useless when they are not associated with meditation. Why? Since in the Upanishadic text, they seek to know it through sacrifice. Brihadaranyaka 4.4.22 The rites like Agnihotra, etc. are heard of without any reservation as the means of knowledge. Opponent. Since it is known that Agnihotra, etc., when associated with meditation, have a distinct advantage over those without meditation, 
It is but proper to say that Agnihotra, etc., when unassociated with meditation, are not conducive to knowledge. Vedantin, that is not so. It is rather proper to think that since Agnihotra, etc., when associated with meditation, acquire a certain distinction owing to the presence of meditation, therefore they have just a special efficacy in producing knowledge, while it is not so in the case of mere Agnihotra, etc., that are not similarly associated. From that, however, one cannot conclude that Agnihotra, etc., heard of in a general way in the text they seek to know through sacrifices, as auxiliaries of knowledge are not their auxiliaries. For the passage which declares, whatever one does along with knowledge, faith, and meditation becomes more efficacious, Chandogya 1.1.10, speaks of the rites like Agnihotra, etc., as becoming more efficacious in producing their own results when they are associated with their own meditations. It thereby shows that the very same Agnihotra, etc., have at least some efficacy in producing their results even when not in association with meditation. The efficacy of a rite consists in its being able to fulfill its own purpose. Hence, the conclusion is this. The obligatory rites like Agnihotra, etc., both as associated and unassociated with meditation, that were undertaken either in this life or the previous life before the dawn of knowledge, with a view to attaining liberation by one who hankers after it, become the destroyers as far as possible of the accumulated sins that stand in the way of the realization of Brahman. Thus, indirectly, they become the cause of the realization of Brahman itself, so that in collaboration with such proximate causes of enlightenment as hearing, reflection, faith, meditation, devotedness, etc., they come to have the same result as the knowledge of Brahman has. Namaste. So we're almost done with the first pod of the fourth chapter. Each chapter of Brahma Sutra is divided into four padas. So the first pada, subject matter, is the question of whether sacrifice, in other words, karma yoga and bhakti yoga, are valuable in the process of self-realization, realization of Brahman. And the unequivocal answer is yes. What kind of sacrifice? With knowledge or without knowledge? Well, both. Anything you do on the path of self-realization, whether it's under regulative principles or spontaneous, or whether it's accompanied by meditation or not, whether it is accompanied by jnana, when he says knowledge, this is not a very good translation. It should be jnana, realized knowledge. Knowledge that I am Brahman, aham brahmasmi. So when I show my deity nicely decorated <laughs> and sitting there smiling, <laughs> I can see him smile anyway. This is a point that this process of sacrifice is good even for realized beings. Everybody, after realization even, can perform sacrifice for two reasons. One is that it shows a good example to those who are not yet realized. And the second is it's a vehicle for teaching. It gives the mind something to anchor itself, to focus on, in the absence of real knowledge of Brahman, huh? self-realization, jnana, it gives the mind something to focus on. So this is an aid to concentration, leading to meditation. And meditation is really the most valuable thing that we can do for self-realization. 
but with the caveat that meditation by itself is not sufficient, just as sacrifice by itself is not sufficient. But it is necessary, a step on the way. I'm going to put up our good old chart again. I know you've seen it a million times, but have you memorized it yet? Hmm? Can you recite all these states of consciousness? Jagrat, Svapna, Sushupti, and Turiya, and their views, and their yogas, and the chakras that facilitate them, that manifest them? Huh? Can you? Huh? Huh? <laughs> See, to really understand this knowledge, you have to make it a part of you. You can't just have superficial book learning. It has to become embedded in your very psyche. Huh? That these are the four states of consciousness. These are their symptoms. These are their objects. These are their functions, their views, their yogas, and so on. Because when you are living huh, and observing your life, you should be able to say, oh, this object is part of Jagrat. This object is part of Swapna. This object, or no object, is Sushupti. And of course, in Turiya, the object is consciousness itself, Brahman. So when one realizes all these things, huh, not just studies, not just learns, not even just memorized, but really embedded in your being, then you can never forget it. It becomes the root of the tree of knowledge. That knowledge, once learned, there is nothing more to be learned. Why is that? Because it leads to self-realization. If you have the knowledge that leads to liberation, then what does it matter whether you have any kind of mundane education or material qualifications, or wealth, fame, beauty, power, etc. Those are all temporary. They're all contingent. That means they're conditioned. They're dependent on circumstances, dependent on luck, or karma, or any number of things that we have no control over whatsoever. <laughs> but what we do have control over is our consciousness and how we look at things. So if we look, for example, if I come into my room and I start looking for dirt, you know, take a broom. I just cleaned the whole house. This is <laughs> why I'm thinking of this. If we start looking for dirt, we'll find dirt, isn't it? But if we start looking for the beauty, oh, I've arranged this room very nicely, Oh, this house is so beautiful and charming. We'll find that. So if we start looking for Brahman, if we start looking for meditation, and the uh, symptoms of enlightenment in ourselves, we will find them. Because actually everybody is already enlightened. <laughs> this is the big secret. Shh, don't tell anybody. We're already Brahman. We're already in Turiya. Or we wouldn't be conscious at all. But that knowledge, that root knowledge of consciousness becomes covered over by Upadi. I am a man. I am American. I am this. I am that. Huh? I am making a video. <laughs> These are all incidental. They're all contingent. And if we observe ourselves honestly, we have to admit everything about our individuality is contingent. It's dependent. It's not original. It's derived from something else. For example, we hear especially young people going around saying things, you know, that they saw on the movies or something. Huh? Feeling lucky, punk? <laughs> Make my day. 
You know, these are all expressions that are popularized in popular culture. But what do they really mean? Do they incline towards self-realization? No. So there's, it's just junk. Junk knowledge, junk thoughts, junk sayings, throwaways. Because the real sayings like tattva masi, aham brahmasmi, see, sarva kalvidam brahma, they give truth that can be seen by one who looks in the right way. And the process of meditation, the process of sacrifice, the acts of devotion, the development of love of God, and so forth, are all steps on the way to that ultimate enlightenment. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.